Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are having a fantastic day or evening. In today's story, OP found out his wife cheated on him after he put a hidden camera in their house, which showed her affair with her APOP. Then sent the video to his lawyer and now his wife's life is a complete wreck. Now, let's get into today's story to find out what happened. I am a 27-year-old man and my ex-wife is 23. Looking back on everything. Now, I believe we got married too young because we were pressured into it by my MIL. We got married when I was 23, she was 18. We were in college when we met and started having sex, which led to accidentally conceiving our child. So before I met her parents, she was carrying my baby. I felt so irresponsible and lost. She was a wonderful girl and seemed very bright and intelligent. I didn't want to leave her now and I couldn't ask her to have an abortion. So a month after I met her parents, she told them what happened. They were shocked but not as upset as I thought they'd be. Her mother immediately began planning the wedding and didn't let us have a say about it. After the simple and inexpensive wedding, we moved into our first two-bedroom apartment. She dropped out of school, but I continued until I graduated with a business degree. By this time, our baby son was one year old. I quickly started a home business and with my parents' help, bought a house. At this time, I noticed that my wife would ignore me and stay distracted by her phone laptop or our son. One night, I made her a nice dinner and asked how she felt about things. She said she didn't feel attractive anymore since she had an after baby belly. I told her she's the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen and that her belly only made me happier because she had my son. She didn't seem to believe me very much. We made love that night and it was very intimate and genuine. Two weeks later, she was still distracted and avoiding conversation with me. I noticed she was buying things to help with her stomach in our house. We only had two cameras, one in the nursery and one in my office. My wife didn't know about the one in my office while I left the house one day to meet with a client, I got a notification on my phone. That motion was detected in the office for some reason I felt nauseous when I saw this notification, it was like I knew something was wrong. I watched the video to see my wife enter the room, sit on my office chair and take very, very bad pictures of herself. I waited with little hope that she'd send me these pictures, but she didn't, I didn't know what to do because I didn't want her to know I had a camera set up. I hoped that I could catch her actually cheating on me in case I needed to divorce her for the next two months. I didn't say anything about her pictures. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. And every time I looked at our son, I wondered who she showed herself to. It was painful. During the time I waited, I installed another hidden camera that watched the front door of the house. When I came home from another client meeting one day, my wife was especially happy to see me. This was odd. She paid me extra attention while we ate dinner together and avoided her phone altogether. I knew something was up immediately. And after she fell asleep, I checked the camera footage, I found the proof I needed while I was out. She let a man I've never seen before into her house. She went into the living room with him out of sight from the camera. Twenty minutes later, he walked butt naked to the bathroom across the hall. I can't describe how disgusted, betrayed and sick. I felt that feeling still hits me sometimes to this day after I discovered the evidence, I wasted no time while my wife slept. I packed her a week's worth of clothes and even gave her some money when it was all ready. I woke her up and showed her the video. She was half asleep at first. But then her eyes were wide in panic. She immediately started to beg me for forgiveness and said that she didn't know what was wrong with her. She said she thought it would make her feel better. I asked if by it she meant cheating on me and sleeping with a man. She hardly knew. And to that she was silent. I told her our son was staying with me and she was leaving. She sobbed and cried. But it wasn't about her son staying with me only that she didn't want me to divorce her. After another hour of that, I convinced her that she messed up and needed to listen to me. If there was any chance of patching things up. She finally left for her parents' house. 
And the next day I took my son with me while I filed for a divorce. I showed my lawyer the video I had and I didn't have to pay her a damn thing. During the court hearings, she tried to get custody and child support, but it was determined that she didn't have adequate living space for a child. So I was awarded custody whenever I see her, she looks at me like she loves me, which confuses me because she had the opportunity to be my wife. I am so sorry you had to go through that. She seemed to be facing some insecurities about her new body, but that did not mean she needed to seek the approval of other men. She had you as her husband and father of her child and she should have taken your word to heart. Marriage is sacred and meant to be a bond between two people that grow stronger through the years, especially while raising a child. It is a shame that she became so focused on her outward appearance before considering how lucky she was to have a future with you and your child. You did the right thing in filing for a divorce because it would have been impossible to trust her wholeheartedly after this. I wish you all the best as you recover from this change in life. Now, for today's second story, I met my ex-fiancé when I was 28, she was 24. We were at the same music festival with our own group of friends. She was with another girl and a guy and I was with two male friends. One was my best friend who saw her from across the way and swore he knew her. We laughed at him and made him walk over there with us. But the joke was on me. As soon as I caught a glimpse of her, I fell in love. I could have sworn she felt the same way. And within ten minutes of meeting, she gave me her number. We all spent the night together at the music festival and I arranged to keep seeing her as we dated. She mentioned that my best friend was talking to her too. I told her he was actually the reason we walked over to her in the first place. But that I was a far better dating choice. I made myself seem better and cooler than my friend. And at the very least it amused her. We continued to date for eight months. And during that time, my best friend told me he started seeing someone. I was really happy for him, but mostly because I wanted my new girlfriend to myself after a year and a half of dating, I was sure I wanted to marry this woman. She was everything I'd hoped for in a lifetime partner. She played the piano and I played guitar. We wrote music together and could talk for hours about the things we had in common or disagreed on. At one point I couldn't take it anymore. And I proposed, I knew we'd be planning the wedding for at least a year, which would give us more time to grow closer. This notion made me want to bring her around my friends, I figured I kept my fiancé and best friend apart long enough and that it would be great to go on a double date when I asked her how she felt about it. She got really weird. She told me she didn't want to see him because he used to have feelings for her. She also added that she didn't want us to compare relationships while on the double date. That made sense to me. But I did mention it had been over a year now and that he told me he was happy with his new girlfriend. She still disagreed with the idea. I was pretty set on getting my best friend to hang out with us. It felt a terrible idea to get married to her while she refused to be around my best friend. What if I wanted him to be my best man? I decided to ask him how he felt about going on a double date. He asked what my fiancé said when I asked her and I lied to say that she agreed to it. After that he hasn't agreed to meet at a restaurant since her phone was broken. My girl's Facebook messenger was logged into my phone. I got a notification that he messaged her asking if they were going to talk to me about something. This seemed highly suspect. I replied as much like her as I could manage telling him it would be the best thing for everyone. I held my breath until he replied, in agreement. We got a table for two at the restaurant since I tried to keep my fans from catching on. As soon as my best friend entered the restaurant, her skin turned pale and she looked at me, she started stammering as he got closer, wondering what was going on. I played dumb until he got to the table and I asked, where's your date? He looked at my Frances like she was supposed to say something and she looked at him like she was indescribably mad and confused. Finally, he said I must know something otherwise he wouldn't be there. Her head dropped into her hands as my best friend explained that they'd been seeing each other and having sex the whole time we were dating, my jaw dropped.
I had not expected this level of betrayal from either of them. I screamed something although I don't remember what and left the restaurant on the way out. She tried to follow me. I could hear her yelling that she chose me, but I left her there over the next week. Her friends tried contacting me on her behalf. They said things like she was sorry, she was torn between the two of us but decided I was the one for her and other bullshit. Eventually all contact with her friends stopped. I heard that she moved into her parents' basement because she was too broken-hearted to work and pay her own rent. My friend sent me a handwritten letter to apologize, but he knew as well as I did that we weren't going to be friends ever again. I know I'll meet someone better than her. But it bothers me that I didn't know what was going on. I feel like the one who lost the most OP. I am very sorry to hear this happen to you. Sometimes it's impossible to know what's going on until it's right in front of you. I know you'll have lots of opportunities to find friends and meet the love of your life. We are each only in control of ourselves and manage our own karma. Be patient wise and honest with the next people you meet. I bet you'll be blessed enough to find people who understand where you're coming from and earn your trust patiently. It was extremely lucky that you found this out before the wedding and didn't have to go through years of marital betrayal. Try to look at the bright future ahead of you and always follow your heart. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, also comment below with your thoughts on today's stories. If there is a story you would like to share with me,